Hello everybody. Welcome to my short presentation on clarifying collections. As a storage facility planner I'm confronted almost daily with the question how big a storage facility should be planned, how much growth is to be included. So I present you an approach to the, the topic in seven acts. Act 1. Importance. Oh yes, I think culture and cultural heritage are important. Nature is important as well. I think an intact nature is even more important than anything else that money can buy. I think we as the heritage advocates are not as important as we might think we are. There is only culture and cultural heritage if we take care for nature as well. The short form is no nature, no culture, no future. Museums within their possibilities also have a responsibility for our environment. There is no culture without an intact nature. Museums are part of the tourism industry and the leisure activity industry. They contribute directly and indirectly to our global footprint that does endanger cultural heritage, culture in the bigger view and humanity as a whole. Act 2. Size. Storage facilities contribute to the use of resources like use of land surface, building material, energy, manpower and finances. There is no God-given growth of museum collections to infinity. We can't be sure that before mentioned resources always keep up with the steady growth of our collections. Therefore collection size should be controlled with great care. We have to take decisions in view of our social and global responsibility. These decisions have to be taken about quality, about quantity, and even more about meaning and relevance of an object. Let's make an example. Let's take this one object, the Trans-Europe Express train, dating to the early 60s of the last century. It's gorgeous, it's interesting, it's meaningful, it's iconic, but it's also huge as a single item. It is well documented. There are many stories and memories to tell about it, this object and it can be appreciated by the general public because it is operational and still in use from time to time for special events. It fits in a railway hall but because of its size it fits hardly as a static object in an ordinary museum. This is a similar train composition put in service in 2018 and it is even bigger than the Trans-Europe Express train. And more important is it is fully packed with software we probably won't be able to maintain and run in the future. This means that this collection item won't be able to be used as an image bearing item by the collection owner. It will probably remain in storage forever because it can't be moved anymore. Maybe we have to admit ourselves that in future we will not have the place, the knowledge and the resources to make this train physically a collectible. We have to rely on other means to make it in some way experienceable to the public. The colored iMac, an iconic object of the turning century. Who needs the whole series of all colors produced in its collection? Wouldn't it be enough to collect them physically at the right place and not in every design museum? Or would it be enough to document the fact that these computers were game-changing at their time, bringing color into an until then grey world of computers? Maybe we add just one typical example to our collection, together with the relevant meta-information that illustrates the context, the impact, the emotions created by this iconic design. 
or we leave that task to other specialized institutions. As these items were produced in thousands, there may be just a few museums that will have to have the whole color range. Act 3. Everything, everywhere. Not every museum needs sewing machines, typewriters, decorated Easter eggs and Andy Warhol prints. Typewriters were definitely a game-changing item at their time and they are at the right place, for example, in a typewriter museum. The quote, an archivist who is not able to sort out 80% of new entries has missed his job, I heard a few years ago, by a senior archivist. Without triage and reduction, every archive would suffocate by the sheer quantity of incoming documents. They perform a triage in several steps over years, or even decades, to reduce the amount of documents by up to 80%. Is it the same for museums? Do we collect too much of the same? Or do we already have too many objects of the same kind in our collections because we do not properly assess the incoming objects? Not every museum has to collect everything, not even in its own collection area. Act 4. Quantity, Quality and Meaning Who is the person on this black and white photography? It is Ho Chi Minh, the Vietnamese leader writing on a Hermes Baby typewriter. So this photography may be meaningful, for example, in a typewriter collection or in Vietnam in a museum of national history. The right place is essentially a place where you would expect to find a specific item in good condition with good documentation. A teddy bear is probably meaningless in a typewriter museum. The context of an object and its meta-information is of equal importance as the physical item itself. No quality collection without context information. Collection size is not necessarily a sign of quality and relevance for society. The condition of an object is crucial in our decisions. Is it worth to keep it? And is it still useful, meaningful? Does it make sense to use precious resources on a particular object? We can't collect everything, we can't store everything, we can't preserve everything, and every object has its finite lifespan. Unrestrained growth means crowded collections, overflowing storages, and last but not least, not enough resources to preserve and maintain the existing collections. A small but fine collection fits better to the available resources in present and future. Act 5. Decisions. Yes, we can. We can make choices. We can increase the quality of our collections by making a selection of quality. No good coffee without a good selection at the harvest, during the refining and roasting. A good collection means a reasonable selection at the moment of accession. We can focus our work on the aspects we really care for. May it be red, blue or any shades of grey. We can review our collections in terms of physical condition, meaning, quality, emotional impact, relevance to society, etc. We have to improve and refine our collections. We may change and alter them. We have the ability to do that and we need to have the courage to commit errors. Not taking decisions concerning our collections may be the biggest danger to our collections in future. A bespoke object at the right place, in the right context and with an adequate documentation may lead to a collection of excellence. We can separate the wheat from the chaff, preferably and reasonably, in relation to criteria set in advance 
and in relation to the resources available. It is also a question of meaning, quality, grace and appearance of an object. We must make a choice. We must focus our collection. We must review and improve our collections. We must create collections of excellence, not of size. We may even have to reduce our collections in order to be able to preserve at least the remaining part in the long term and get better protection for fewer objects. Act 6. Actions. Don't be afraid of your old backlog of existing but not inventoried collections. Create a framework for the future in creating valid criteria for accessing and especially also for refusing objects when offered to a collection. Give priority to processing new collection entries rather than reprocessing existing ones. Create options, not restrictions, in order to improve your collection in future by exchange, accessing and deaccessioning. We have to take decisions concerning our cultural heritage, about our collections. We have to set priorities as not everything is possible. There is not the one and only good decision. We have to take certain risks to decide and we may fail by taking decisions. A decision is correct at the time when it is taken and may be dismissed later. That's life and in most cases nobody is to be judged or blamed as we are all children of our time. Without consciously restricting our collecting activities we will fail in future to maintain and preserve our collections due to a lack of resources. Act 7 the bigger picture. Let's look ahead a hundred years in the future. Hundred years are about four generations. Our own planning horizon may be five to ten years at the best. The crucial question is what shall we do nowadays that in a hundred years time a relevant part of our cultural heritage still remains? Where should we use the scarce resources in the most reasonable way to achieve the best leverage? Maybe not in collection growth, but in clarifying our collections, improving their quality and providing better preservation conditions for our precious objects. Not the very best for very few objects, but reasonable conditions for a reasonable number in order to preserve a relevant part of our collections for future generations. Culture is not unrestrained stockpiling of cultural heritage objects, but creating emotions, food for thoughts, identity by means of objects set in their context. Objects in collections of excellence may help us with that task to create emotions, provide food for thoughts and create identity. Stop unchecked stockpiling. Let's clarify our collections. Let's make them relevant again. Let's make them more sustainable. Let's set priorities. This means also to keep our collections in a reasonable and sustainable size by constantly reviewing them in order to improve quality and relevance. The task of preserving a collection is being aware of the responsibility to create, improve and preserve the excellence of a collection, done in an effective way with the resources available. Quality matters, not size. Thank you for your attention.